Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at templates for different types of pages in Hugo and the semantic tags that you need to add to them. Assume knowledge for this video is that you have got Hugo and Visual Studio Code set up and you've also imported the Bootstrap 5 CSS and JS into your project. If you haven't got this done, there's a link above for a video that explains how you can do it. You also need to have basic knowledge of Hugo's menu system and Bootstrap's navbar. I've also got a video, which is the one previous to this, which explains those two concepts. By the of this video, you'll be able to create index, single and list page templates. You'll be able to create default and custom templates, and you'll be able to use HTML5 semantic tags. Now, before we get started, you'll need to have a Hugo project ready to go. Now I've got this one here and the link is below in the description. It's for the it's the completed project from the previous video and that's where we looked at the basics of the bootstrap navbar and using that with Hugo's menu system. So if you click on that link you can then download the, the zip file of the code and extract that and open it up in Visual Studio Code. So step one is adding semantic tags to the base of .html template. Now this template is, it's an overarching template that your whole site runs off. It's not just uh, section specific, although you can override it for particular parts of the website, but we will not be looking at that in this video. Now I'll place this thing below. It's the W3Schools reference for semantic elements. And it defines here, semantic elements are elements that clearly define their content. So non-semantic elements such as div and span, they don't really tell us what's going on. So it's very hard for a search engine or a screen reader, uh, which provides accessibility for people with poor vision. It's very hard for screen readers and, and search engines to really work out what's going on with non-semantic elements or tags, but semantic elements clearly describe what's happening. Now, there are a bunch of semantic elements that we can use to describe the layout of the website. There's a great example here on the right of the semantic tags required to describe the average website. For example, here the side you'd use for additional links or a short menu. Article is for pieces of information that can be moved from page to page. They are independent of the rest of the website. And section is for a chunk of content. Footers, navs, and headers usually appear consistently across the whole website. So let's get started. We're going to go into the layouts folder inside default, and we've got baseof.html. Now we've already got a head tag in there, um, but that's not really semantic because it doesn't describe part of the website. So we'll go down to body, and then we'll add header. Now, because Visual Studio Code already has Emmet installed enabled by default, all you have to do is type header and tab and Visual Studio Code will auto, uh, Emmet will automatically create the tags for you. If you use enter, it will create a new line. It'll also automatically indent for you. Then we can cut and paste those items in there. We're gonna insert a main tag and we'll cut and paste the main content in there and a footer tag. For the footer. That was quite easy. Let's have a look now at the navbar. So in the partials folder you'll see navbar. This is from the previous video. If you don't understand how the bootstrap navbar or the Hugo menu system works, please go back and watch that previous video. You'll see that by default bootstraps already use the nav semantic tag that could you could have used div in its place and it will work exactly the same it just won't be as easy for search engines and assistive technology to work out what that part of your website's for so now i have a look at creating a landing page that's a, a, a single page with multiple sections using the semantic tags now for this example we're going to be using some pre-built examples of the bootstrap website in this video, I'm not going to go into creating data and content for your homepage and then inserting it and building it with Hugo. I'm just going to go into creating the template and in a later video, I will look at how to create parameters and content and pull that into your landing page. So I put the link to this page in the description below. You have to download all of the examples here. Don't do download source, that's for Bootstrap itself. We're downloading the examples. 
First thing I'm gonna do is insert a hero piece of content for the landing page. I'm gonna choose this one here, the third one down. So once you've extracted that folder, the easiest way to do is open the entire folder with VS Code, and then we're going to find the correct folder. So we're going to hero, and then we've got the image we'll need, the custom CSS and the HTML. So open up the HTML. We're gonna to have to scroll down and find the third section. Don't worry about the divider. Copy that, go back into your project. And then we're gonna look inside the layouts folder. Open up index.html. For now, I'm going to comment out the existing code and paste in the bootstrap content. Now, before we try and view that, there's a few things we have to do. We have to work out the image and we have to work out the CSS. So you'll have to copy and paste the CSS and the themes image. Hold down control to select both of those, then copy them. And then go to the static folder. This isn't the way I normally um, work with images and uh, other assets like CSS and JS, but to keep this uh, simple, I'm gonna paste them into the static folder. I'm making, then gonna make an IMG folder for image and a CSS folder. I'm gonna drag those into, the, into their folders. Now you'll notice with the CSS, um, if we go back to the bootstrap example, You'll see they've got some custom CSS at the top. I'm gonna to highlight that, copy it, and then paste it into our CSS file. I'm just gonna paste it in there. I don't want any inline CSS. And then we've got to fix up these links. So we're gonna do slash IMG slash, and we've got to insert a link for the CSS. I'm gonna go up into my head partial and put a new link. So type in link and tab, and then the location will be slash CSS slash heroes dot CSS. Let's save it, save both those, and we'll start up Hugo with the command Hugo server. We'll see how it goes. All right, so that's working really well. Now what we've got to do is add the section tags and we'll add one more section off the Bootstrap Examples website. So above this section, we'll put in the section tag. So type in section, hit tab and enter. Highlight the rest of the code. You could drag it up, you can cut and paste it, doesn't matter. Um, if you need to reformat it, hold down Alt, sorry, Windows Shift F to uh, reformat all the indentations and save it. Let's go back to the Bootstrap Docs website now and look for another piece of code that we can put into our landing page. We'll go back to the main page. Inside features, there's an interesting one down the bottom full of icons. Now we'll do this one because it's a bit of an introduction to SVG graphics as well. So we'll go back into uh, VS Code where we've opened up the Bootstrap examples and we'll look for features. And you'll notice again, we've got some images, the HTML and the CSS. We don't need images for this example, but we'll scroll right down to the bottom. And we're gonna be taking this code. We'll copy that. And then we'll place a new section tag in. So type in section and tab. Paste it in. Now it's not going to work because you haven't got the CSS, the custom CSS. It also won't work because we haven't got the SVG uh, icons ready to go. You'll notice um, over here for the SVG, it's referencing um, part of a sprite. So let's copy and paste the SVG in and the CSS. So at the top of this page, 
you'll see a bunch of paths in the SVG tag. So we'll copy and paste everything between the opening and closing SVG tag. And then back in our document, we'll scroll right to the top above our section tag and we'll paste in that SVG path information. And that's for all the different icons that are displaying. And then we'll copy the features CSS. This is some custom code. We're probably not going to use all of it, but we'll copy and paste it in anyway. Um, if you were doing this for a production website, you'd want to go through and, and get rid of any excess code. So copy that. And we'll paste that into the CSS folder. And then back in the head partial, we're going to create a, li a link to it. So type in link and tab and then it's slash CSS slash features dot CSS. Let's save that and have a look. All right, so that's looking great. And if we check our inspect the source, you'll see that we've got the header tag and the nav tag there for the top of our page. We've got the main tag for the main content, we've got our footer tag, and then inside main, we have our two sections. You'll notice inside the two sections, we have headings. And Google or a screen reader will know that inside that section, the first heading that it finds is the heading that describes the section. So the next thing we're gonna do is look at creating a single .html template, and that's for displaying pages which aren't list pages, pages that don't uh, show an overview of a whole section, which is most pages in Hugo. So in the layouts folder, under, in the underscore default folder, we've got base of which we've already looked at, we've also got list and single, and first of all, we're looking at single, and you'll see in here, uh, we've got some basic uh, bootstrap HTML, and it's been set up to display the title, a subtitle that's present, and the content. The main thing we're missing here is a section, which isn't entirely necessary, um, but we'll pop in a section there. And it can be useful to apply classes to section in case you want to target them later. So if we type in section dot, and then we'll call it main, we'll end up with a class of main. We'll go back and we'll add those classes to our landing page as well. In case you, for example, you wanna change the background color of a section, Makes your life a lot easier. So we'll save that and we'll go back into the home page and we'll call this section class equals hero. And that way you can style the different sections of your home page individually. And we'll call this one class equals features. Makes it a lot easier to, to target them. So we're not gonna do anything else to the single page for now because that's pretty much set up for defaults. You can modify that as you wish with bootstrap utility classes. But what I really wanna talk about is list templates and this is where it starts to get really interesting. So if we go open up the content folder, we've got an underscore index page and that's actually a list template but because it's underscore index, it's for our home page. Inside about, we've only got one file and that's an index without an underscore. And that is a single page. That's the difference, what the underscore does. It turns it from a single into a list. But we don't normally use index for uh, display, the, the home page for displaying lists. But what we'll do now is I'm gonna copy and paste some content in. And you, you find a link below for the repository for this project and you can copy and paste it in there too. I've just put in a folder called products and inside that folder I have a, an index file with an underscore and that's gonna be my list page and it's gonna display all of these products, all of the other files. We can view those pages individually but we'll bring them all together in the index page. Before we go and try and display it, let's go through to the list.html and you'll notice it's empty so let's put some code in. So here's what we're gonna do. First thing we have to do is define the block. So we're trying to display, all this code will be placed into the, the main block in our base of template. We're gonna do a container. And 
so div.container and then we'll do div.row and I'm gonna justify the content to the center of the page. So justify content center and then we're gonna put it in a column So now we're going to put in the article semantic tag and that's because we'll put in a, a title so we'll do h2 we'll close our brackets and then if content has been supplied and we'll pop some in in a moment it will be displayed here And here's where it gets interesting. So we're not only going to um, put in a list of pages, we're going to put in pagination. So if there's too many to display on one page, we'll have a, a, a number of we'll have some page numbers at the bottom of the screen. Now there is a number of ways you can do this, and there's a link below to the Hugo Docs. But the easiest way to do it is we do a range dot paginator dot pages. This is the most simplistic way to do it. Then we'll put in another article tag because we're referencing information. This time we'll do a H3 because this heading is less important than the H2 above it. We'll do a, a link and we're going to link to dot permalink because we've, we've ranged through the pages and we're going to link to the permalink of the page which is currently being displayed. So dot permalink and close the curly braces. And then the text we're gonna display there is the title of the page. And then below that, we'll display a description of the page. Now, if a description hasn't been defined, We'll then display a summary. There's a few ways we can do this, and some people might not even bother putting the description. They might just go straight to summary, and I'll show you. We'll look at that use case at the end. We'll turn it off. So there's a really useful function in Hugo called default. So if description is blank, then it will default to summary, and then we'll turn off description, and we'll look at that option as well. Um, and we've closed our article off. Then we'll end our range. And then there's a template that's built into Hugo. You now to access a built-in template, we're on the template function. And all of the internal built-in templates start with internal. And I'll leave a link below to the internal templates. There's quite a few. And it's called pagination. Pagination is quite a useful template for us because it actually works with, has uses bootstrap utility classes by default. It's set up and ready to go. So let's save that. I've obviously got to end our block at the bottom, our main block. Now there's one more thing you must do, and that is normally you don't need to put HTML when you're calling a partial, but with template, the template function doesn't automatically resolve that. So you must put HTML on the end of that. And before we check out the website, one thing I must let you know is on the index page, I've already assigned it to the main menu and that's something I've discussed in the previous video. So for our index.md, we've assigned it to the main menu with a weight of 30. So let's check it out. All right, so there's our page products. It's the third one along. I've used weight of 10, 20 and 30 for the first three. And you'll see there we've got the main heading, the heading of each page and a description or a summary for each. So now that we have some basic templates set up, let's have a look at customizing pagination and the summary for the list template. So as you can see, currently no pagination is taking place. We've got four items and they're all displaying on the first page. Let's set up Hugo so that it's gonna only have three items per page. So in your Hugo project, we're gonna open up the config folder and open up config.yaml. This may be, if you're using your own project, this may be sitting in the root directory. But for this project, we've set it up in a folder and we're splitting it into components. So the 
item we're going to add, and you, you'll find this on the Hugo Docs under configuration, it's paginate. And that controls the amount of items per page when we're using pagination. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll set it to three. I wouldn't leave it at that, but it's good for testing. So now you can see our pagination has shown up. However, we need to add some a margin between the the uh, descriptions and the pagination because currently it's way too close. And you can see there we can go between pages. So we'll open up the list template. We'll wrap our pagination in a div. So div dot m dash three. So the next thing I'd like to do is align the pagination buttons in the center of the screen. Now we can use bootstrap utility classes to do this. So we've already wrapped the pagination template in a div with a margin of three. Now to justify it in the center, we first have to enable flex. So we do that with d-flex for display flex. And then we're going to use the class justify content center. And that's looking great. Let's have a look now at the way that our summaries are generated by Hugo. So there's three ways that Hugo can generate content summaries for us. The first way is an automatic split and it's set to split it at approximately 70 words. We're going to customize that with this parameter here called summary length. So let's go in and we'll have a go at changing that to start with. So we'll open up the config.jml file and we'll put in our summary length and we'll change it for now to 10 words so we can see the obvious difference. And you can see that the length has been shortened substantially. The scooter hasn't got a summary, it's got a description and that's because we've set up Hugo to insert the description if one has been provided and at the end we'll remove that so you can see the difference and you can set it up according to the way you'd like your site set up. It is really important to include descriptions so that you can include them for SEO in the head of your of each HTML document. The next way that we can create a summary is by inserting the following text. It has to be an exact copy um, or it won't work. So I'm going to leave the first paragraph as the summary for cars and I'll do it for truck as well. I'll put two paragraphs for truck. We'll save that. You can see we've got the full paragraph there for car and we've got two paragraphs for truck. And the third way you can do it with Hugo is by manually creating your own summary in the front matter. So you've got to head back into your front matter. So I'm in car, I'm going to create an item in the front matter, I'm going to just copy and paste two sentences there. You could create, it, you could make it completely different if you like, if, if, you, if you need to summarize it yourself. And you can see there in car we've got the two sentences. Now the last thing I'm going to do is turn off the, um, in our template, remove the code which makes Hugo utilize the description if one's present. So if we open up the scooter markdown file, we see there's a description there. In our list template, we've told Hugo to use the description if it's present and if it's not, default to summary. Let's set it now so it only displays a summary since we're really good now at generating summaries. And you can see there, we're now, Scooter now is using a summary rather than a description. And the last thing I'm going to show you in this video is some simple methods of creating custom templates for different content types. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to copy and paste the products folder. And 
and I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it second hand. Now, when we're dealing with list templates, Hugo will automatically ass assign this product to the corresponding layout type. So if we make a folder inside layouts called second hand, copy and paste in the list and single template. And then we go in and modify them, we should see the results. So for example, for my heading, put in a class of text primary. And then we'll go into our single. Make this text secondary. And we need to change the name of head into our index file and we'll change the title. And we'll change the weight to 40. Let's have a look. So we've got our menu item for secondhand products. And you'll see it's coming up with the blue heading. And then we'll head into the actual product and you'll see it's coming up with the text secondary heading. Now that's automatic. Here goes matching up our, the folder from our content type with the folder in the layouts folder. But we can customize it and there's two reasons you want to do that. If it's just a single page, for example, we have an about page. Um, it will not match that about because we haven't got a our index with the underscore for a list page because we haven't got that present um, it, it will not automatically link it up the other reason is you might just want to link up two different content types with the same template so what we can do if we go into our page here we can change type so we'll go to our standard products we'll do type and we'll call that second hand. We'll save that. You'll see our normal products are now using the second hand template. With the exception of the single items, you do have to go back in and individually configure each one of those items. So you're much better off linking those up automatically. So for example, I have to go into the standard bike and change the type. So that is quite um, labor intensive. You can see there now we've overridden bike, but if we go to car, it's still using the default. So say I want to change the layout for the about page. What we we'll have to do is head into the layouts folder. We'll create a new folder called about, but unfortunately it won't link up for us automatically. So we'll go into default, copy our single template, paste it into about, we'll make our changes. So example, we'll put a class on there of text info. Then we'll go into our about file and type is about that will now be linked. So there you go, it's using a custom template for about. So if you want to do some further reading, you've got content types here where it explains that um, the lowest folder where the content sits, that's where how Hugo links up your content type and your template and if you're looking to do a list um, template we're looking at a branch bundle putting the underscore in the index will allow you to list the contents of that folder so i hope you enjoyed the introduction i'll put all the links for all the documents uh, for the concepts we've discussed below 
And as usual, if you enjoy the videos, please subscribe, hit the like button and turn on the bell to get notifications of new videos. I release new videos every week. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, please place them below.